Hey y'all, Jill here. Welcome back to the farm. Truth be told, I have been running around like a crazy person today. <laughs> um, we have got one of our really, really sweet friends coming to stay with us today. For a few days, it was kind of like last minute. Um, and we have actually been friends with this person for over a year. And when they called us up and asked, hey, I know it's kind of all of a sudden, but what do you think if I come to Arkansas and see you guys for a few days? Nathan and I were like, we have an open door policy for reasons just like this. And so we are preparing for our friend. Um, I'm trying to somewhat clean my house. <laughs> um, we do have an open door policy, but with that, we say the door is always open, but what's behind it might not always be clean. Um, and if you're cool with that, we're cool with that. <laughs> so it's probably as good as it's gonna get. But today is a massive day for us on the farm, and I really wanna kind of talk through this with you guys. Um, so, hi, I'm Jill. Welcome, thanks for hanging out with me today. Um, I am a vlogger, and what I mean by that is I do YouTube for a living. <laughs> and it's really stinking cool. Um, but with that, I do a lot of other things. So I have YouTube, which me and my husband and our family do. It's a family vlog. We also garden and you know educate and teach people and just share our everyday life. And uh, we have an online store where we sell all sorts of cool things. And then we also do a lot of online education. So I just wrote a book. That was a huge thing that took me a year to finish. But I do a lot of uh, online courses. I did a course last year or maybe two years ago with my friend Jess over at Roots and Refuge. Um, if this place looks familiar, it's because it was hers. <laughs> uh, a year later and we are still getting asked that almost weekly. Did you buy Roots and Refuge? We did, this is their house. Well, I guess our house now. Um, and so I did a course with her. I have done sourdough courses. I have done, I was gonna walk to the tunnel, but Nathan's not one, so we'll go to the raised bed garden. Um, I have done sourdough courses. I have done flower courses on how to grow cut flowers in your backyard. Um, that was super, super fun. I am working right now on a vegetable course, really, really geared towards the backyard grower, wanting to grow efficiently. How do you grow a boat ton of food in your backyard? Uh, working on a fermenting course with my friend. And I wanna just kinda sit down and talk through that vision with you guys a little bit more. So I shared with you guys the other day what a delivery morning looks like for me. Uh, it starts super, super early, especially this time of year when my kids are in school. Um, and it's it's fun, right? Like those are the moments that I kind of live for. It's like the garden's hard. The garden's hard, the garden's work. Don't let anyone tell you it's not. But you do have to find those things that are constantly kind of pulling you back in. Um, and so I kind of shared with you guys what that looked like, selling flowers. And now I want to share with you another part of what this looks like. And I share this so openly is because I know so many people who want this lifestyle. And I preach this across my channel loud and clear. This is not just for me. Um, I truly believe that <laughs> we serve an and God, not an or God. And what I mean by that is that I could have this and you can have this. Not a Jill could have this or you could have it. I believe he truly does care about the desires of all of our hearts and if we steward him well he will honor that and so what that looks like is me taking any opportunity I can to try to tell you guys what we do and how we build out our business we have a lot of funnels um, and we will continue to have a lot of funnels and that doesn't mean that we have no direction and we're all over the place <laughs> uh, that means we are really playing to our strengths to the best of our abilities I mean, one of that way, one of the ways we do that is through online education. I love showing up for you guys every day, and I love that y'all love just knowing what's going on. But not every video I put out here can be educational because there is so much work that goes behind that. Um, there's a lot involved, so I do that. If I'm, you know, fermenting foods, I'm going to take you guys along. If I'm planting, I'm going to give you all the tips and tricks I can possibly think of to set you up for success. But sometimes it looks like me grabbing the camera, sitting under my pergola, and we're talking about how I make business work. <laughs> and I do think this is part of it too. Because if you are the person who is watching this right now and you're thinking, 
man, I really want to do this for a living. What does that look like? This is one of our streams of revenue that we do that we are very diligent about. So we plan out quarterly. Um, we have had this planned actually for like the last year. We planned out a potential courses we would want to do. And what that looks like is every single Tuesday, and this literally looks like every single Tuesday for the rest of the year, <laughs> I'm going to be filming. And so we have hired a good friend of ours who is still in high school. I'm really good friends with his uh, mom. And so he is going to be doing the videography for that. So he's going to come out here and he's going to shoot and we have our outline everything done for the fermenting course. That's more like sit down, um, more where I, I can manage uh, the videography there. And so that's what Tuesdays are going to look like. I'm going to be shooting content. I'm really listening to what you guys are saying you want to know and my goal is behind this because you can go to YouTube or the internet for that matter. You can find anything you want to find. So what sets me apart? What sets someone else apart that does an online course? It's the intentionality and being diligent to sit down, to curate content, and to put everything you need from start to finish in one conducive place. Um, these bite-sized videos that you can come back and reference, these printable uh, PDFs that you can have as a guide, these recipes so you're not having to buy all the cookbooks, you know. Um, really just kind of going through the fundamentals of all of these things. And when I did my first course with Jessica, I lived at my old farm. She lived here. And I was scared to death, y'all. I did YouTube. I was still not super confident with like, I mean, I could film in front of myself, but like filming with other people there and let alone like Jessica, like if I said something wrong, she would know, like she would call me out on it. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna mess it up. Am I gonna mess it up? Um, and she gave me so much encouragement in that and really just built my confidence and like, hey, this is what God has called you to. Embrace this, embrace this. Don't shy away from this, like, you know, head into this and and feel confident in it and I realized through that process that she was right I did actually have a lot of knowledge and this was something I was really passionate about and I really wanted to teach people how to do this thing in a you know sit down course style and so we have just loved it um, and so I kind of give you that backstory to let you guys know this is a lot of what you're gonna see these aren't things we just thought of willy-nilly oh we're gonna throw this product out oh we're gonna throw this course out these are things that it, Nathan and I have thought about and prayed about we went before our team we've planned it out to where it makes sense with what you guys are doing um, to really just kind of gear and set you guys up because I know when I was in the beginning stages I was buying all the books I still do buy all the books <laughs> Um, I was taking all the courses and it was very valuable to have those resources and I want to be one of those trusted resources for you guys. So today it's kind of crazy, but I'm excited. The cooler weather I am certainly embracing, um, but I do want to go out to the tunnel real quick and see what's going on. Our green beans are just about done. I've ripped out all of our uh, zinnias over there. Nathan started ripping out okra we have our brassicas here that are starting our dahlias of course are in full bloom <laughs> and they look lovely but i'm kind of ashamed to say this i have not been out in my high tunnel in probably a week that is not the advice i would give you you need to lay eyes on things constantly even if it's automated um, now I can get by with doing that because like I said, our farm is pretty automated. We have timers going off, but I still like to just lay hands just to see. Um, and I haven't done that because it's just kind of been a crazy week for us. Um, but let's head down here now, see what's going on. Y'all, these pigs, you do not belong there. No, what are you doing in here? Are you heifer? not where this pig belongs. What are you doing in there? Is that where you belong? So the pigs keep getting out. Nathan fixed the hot wire, accidentally shocked himself and he came back in the house and he's like, well, it works. I am 1000% confident <laughs> that it works. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure he'll be real happy about that. 
ridiculous. You got to go. Go back where you came from. Go back. All right, Nathan's taking care of the pig situation. Let's see what's going on in the tunnel. Oh. <laughs> it needs a little work. Um, I have not been on, so we were pruning and like pin, like clipping our peppers up weekly. I haven't been doing that because I know I'm going to rip these out soon and it really wasn't worth the effort that I was putting in at this point. Um, but they're still producing really well. However, that second round of cucumbers, check these out. They're literally, look at this. Yeah, so I mean I put these in just like a few weeks ago. That's incredible. Um, and despite not being clipped up, these are still, they still look really good. Y'all don't let me forget, I put this cucumber down. Because I'll show enough forget. So these are coming out this week. Our tomatoes are coming out. But we have our tomatoes here. These are the Grand Marshal. Uh, we are going to do these in a Florida weave. Um, just to show a different trellising technique. I think that's really good to be able to diversify what you grow, but also diversify and know different ways to trellis. Um, and really it's just kind of a good point of reference. So we are going to be doing that. You guys, I have had these tomatoes in here since April 22nd. And can we just talk about, I mean, look at them. I've not seen a single hornworm. They are still producing fruit. It's wild, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> There's a few reasons. One, because for so early on, we hard, hard prune them. When you intensively prune your plants, you allow so much airflow that one, you're just, you get better airflow, you have less pests and you have less disease. It makes such a massive difference when you're able to do that. And you can see where it got bushier because we knew we were about to take these out. So I quit staying on that intensive, you know, pruning schedule. When you see these big groupings of plants of like the foliage, that's when you start seeing disease happen. That's when these are starting to have discoloration. And it's really just because of an airflow. And so I always tell people, if you have an excessive amount of pest and disease, first, see what your soil conditions are like. And two, really like evaluate what type of pruning that you're doing. Because usually it's simple fixes like that that can make a massive uh, impact. So even though these still could go on for a minute, uh, for the sake of needing to flip this bed to get it ready for the fall and winter crops, uh, we're going to go ahead and take this out. And they're not doing great. And I also don't want to risk, you know, the, now they are starting to really kind of phase out, which we've had these in probably a month and a half longer than anyone else around here. So I do feel good that we got them in sooner. We were able to still harvest later. Um, I don't want to take the risk of this disease spreading to some of the other things now that we have some of our other crops in here. This was the kohlrabi that Nathan and I planted. It's doing really well. You can see it shot up pretty nicely. Uh, this was the cauliflower, and I'm not like, you know, I'm not here to talk about anybody, but I planted this row, and they all look great. And then Nathan planted this row, <laughs> and they all died. <laughs> I've got a few, but uh, they definitely don't look as good. I'm just kidding. It actually had nothing to do with the side Nathan planted on. We were supposed to lay another um, line of drip tape and we didn't. And so the reason that they died is because it got too hot. Um, and I want to share that with you guys because I told you I wasn't hands on. And even as automated as some things are, I totally forgot I needed to lay that drip tape um, until I came out here and thought, oh man. Um, and so here I am. Uh, so give, your grace, give yourself grace with that. This time of year, it's actually really easy to kind of forget common tasks like that. Uh, we still have a ton of shishito peppers. All of these are peppers. We will leave these in until probably around November, but they're doing really great. And then this is super fun too. We've got our ginger starting to come up. Um, so you actually are supposed to like kill it like this. Um, so I'll go through and take my hand, scoop some of it up, weed a little here and there. Look at it though, it's getting big. That's super encouraging. Look at these little guys. That's fun. So I got a lot of life still happening in the greenhouse. 
that is certainly going to be my sanctuary come these super super cold months um, I love having that like just seeing so much lush and green and beauty in the dead of winter it'll put a smile on anybody's face you put these turds back where they go all you gotta do is open that feed bucket I thought you got shocked by the electric fence the other day and felt really I, good about them not getting back out we have a solar charger and we got all these mature trees and I just don't think it hits them hard enough. Yeah. I think by midday, by the end of the day, we just didn't have enough shot. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that boy. I mean, Yeah. how funny. He climbs in there and he hogs the food. He'll sit on the food so they can't get in there. What a turd. Chomping sounds of pigs eat. You love listening to the chomping sounds? Yeah, do you not? I'll tell you this, I love it more listening to the pigs do it than the kids. Mm. <laughs> that is one of mama's pet peeves, and I think it's because as a kid it was instilled in me, don't you dare smack at the dinner table, and I got swatted more times than I care to admit. No. Uh, and so now I'm like, girls, don't you dare. Um, we actually have some friends of ours coming to get three of the pigs this weekend. They were supposed to get them oh, last really? week. Mm -hmm. All right. And it just didn't work out for us. Our schedule was really kind of crazy. Um, and so they're gonna come. And then we'll just be down to Peppa. And two babies. I know, I need to get them off my feed bill. Yeah, they sure are sweet though. Mm -hmm. All right, Dad, I'm about to go in. I told them that we've got a special guest coming today. And probably on the next vlog, you guys will get to see who that is and we'll get to share their story and how we met. And I'm excited about it. I am it. too. I told them it's been almost a year long relationship and we've never met in person. So That's right. uh, we're excited, but thanks for hanging out with us today. I can't wait to share with you guys more behind scenes of the courses that we're working on um, and what we have going on on our farm on yesterday's video. So many of you guys were so pumped about kind of the revelation I had for the raised bed garden. I, I feel like, I feel kind of like just a fire has been lit and I feel so good about this direction. I have so much vision, I'm so excited. I love that you guys are excited and I just get to bring you guys along uh, for that journey as I'm well. I'm excited too. Yeah, oh yeah. It's like the one time you gave me the freedom, like okay, you don't have to grow food just to put up. We got lots put up. We got lots put up, so we are definitely, uh, excited about what the spring and the summer have to hold but thanks for hanging out with us we'll talk to you soon bye guys